Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Bang YouTube channel. Today we're solving 1905 count sub islands. You are given two m by n binary matrices, grid one and grid two, containing only zeros representing water and ones representing land. An island is a group of ones which is connected four directionally, either horizontally, horizontally or vertically. Any cells outside the grid are considered water cells. An island in grid 2 is considered a sub-island if there's an island in grid 1 that contains all the cells that make up this island in grid 2. Return the number of islands in grid 2 that are considered sub-islands. So let's look at the islands uh, that we have in both. Obviously this is one island here, this is one island, this is one island. In this one we have five islands, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So let's look at which one might be a sub-island. So basically a sub-island um, is all of the points in that island are contained as part of another island uh, over here. So we can see that, okay, this top left corner is here, this one 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 is here. So we have a full match on all of the tiles on this island. It's okay that this one doesn't match. Obviously, it's a sub-island. It's not going to have everything. So that is one island, basically this one here. Then we have uh, this island here, but we can see that there is no corresponding island there, so this one is not a sub-island. Um, and then what else do we have? We have this tile, which has a corresponding one here, so that is another sub-island. And then we have this tile, there is a corresponding island there. Um, so basically this island is part of this island, and this one is a sub-island of that one, so we have three. This one, obviously there's no corresponding tile, so this one doesn't um, work. And then since this square is not part of a island over here, then this entire island also cannot be. So that's why this uh, piece is not its own sub island. So basically there are three sub islands. Now again, like with these problems, doing it visually is much easier than actually solving it. And the way that we're going to do this and the way that you solve most of these problems is by doing some sort of traversal. So you can either do a DFS, you can do a BFS, or you can use a union find. I prefer to use BFS. All the three algorithms will actually have the same time and space complexity. I just find that BFS is actually going to be the simplest uh, way for actually going through the grid. Now the algorithm that we want to go with here is basically we want to go through our grid, um, grid one via the rows and the columns. And every time we see a land, we basically want to check whether or not this land uh, constitutes some sub-island. So basically, when we reach an island, uh, that will tell us, okay, we have an island. Let's now check for that island in grid 2. So what we're going to do is every time we meet an island piece in grid 1, we're going to kick off a BFS to basically see whether or not um, we can find that island. And the way that we're going to find whether it's a sub-island is okay we know that this uh, element here is an island piece in grid one so we're going to look into grid two and we're going to ask ourselves okay is that one an island here as well or is it land yes now what we can do is actually just go four directionally and basically try to find all of the points in this island and see if they have a corresponding uh, land on this island if they do then this is considered a sub island when our kind of helper function uh, returns, then we'll know that this entire island here can be considered uh, to have a sub-island. So basically, once we go into our helper function, we're just gonna explore four directionally, check all of the islands, uh, all the directions, and anything that this island touches, um, we're basically just going to um, check whether or not it has a corresponding one uh, over here. And this is very similar to the algorithm that we used for, I think, max area of an island, where basically we found an island and we want to just go in all four directions to find all the tiles there. If we hit the boundary, obviously we stop counting. If we hit a zero, we don't count that and we only count the, um, the one tiles. Now, obviously, you're going to have a lot of uh, repeated uh, computations here because you're doing your DFS. So we will need to maintain a visited um, data structure to basically tell us where we've already been. And this will basically keep our um, logic from repeating itself and we don't have to check the same tiles over and over again this way because we'll maintain a visited set we'll only actually have to explore uh, the grid entirely once we'll basically just touch every single cell and our time complexity will just be big o of n times m 
and actually the space as well because we're gonna have to store that in the visited um, so with that being said we have a general idea of how the intuition for this works let's actually go to the code editor and type it up all right we're now in the code editor let's type this up it's going to be useful to us to actually know the total number of rows and the total number of columns so let's just um, get kind of a, a placeholder to hold these things so we're going to say rows is going to equal to the length of grid one and the columns is going to equal to the length of grid one of zero okay so that will give us that value now remember that we want to basically store uh, whether or not we have seen um, or visited each tile so that we don't go back on ourselves. So we're going to create basically a new grid uh, which is going to store whether or not we visited uh, the grid. So we're basically just going to recreate our 2D matrix here and we're just going to say false times, let's see, the total number of columns uh, for blank in range rows. So basically we're going to recreate a uh, matrix here, grid 2, uh, well, the dimensions of grid one and grid two, uh, and it's going to store false. And each index here represents whether or not we've actually visited that tile before. So we'll use this to mark uh, whether or not we have been there. Obviously, we need a result, so we'll initialize this to zero. Now, what we want to do is actually uh, iterate through our grid and figure out when we hit an island, uh, what do we do? So we're going to say four uh, x in range of rows and then for y in range of columns actually we can just use better variable names so we'll say for row in range rows or for column in columns that will be our current row and column position what we want to do is if we haven't visited this tile before somehow and this tile is land and we want to check whether or not um, this current position will give us a sub island so we're going to say if so let's go through our kind of checks here so we're going to say if not visited so we haven't haven't visited uh, this particular uh, position so not visited and uh, what this time this land this sorry this position row and column should not be uh, water right it should be land otherwise why are we looking for an island if we're not even on land so we're going to say um, basically is this cell uh, a land cell and what we do that is basically is grid one of the row and the column uh, does this equal to one right that's how we tell if it equals to land and what else do we want to do we also want to check is this uh, do we get a sub island by traversing here and we still need to define the function to actually get a sub island but we'll do that in a second so we're going to say and self dot um, is sub or has sub island uh, has sub island we're going to pass in our current position so row column we're going to pass in the grid one the grid two and our visited data structure so if all these things are true, basically we haven't visited this position before. This position is land and there is a sub island starting from kind of this position where we are. Then we can actually increment our sub island count. So this is going to be our result. We're going to increment it by one. At the end, all we need to do is simply return our result. Now, obviously we need to define the function for has sub island which is going to be our helper function for actually doing the bfs in the second grid here so let's now do this and actually before we do that let's now actually define um, the directions because we might want to uh, use them so we'll say self dot direction actually no we can't do that directly so we'll just say directions equals to okay so we can go this way we can go this way uh, we can go minus one and we go minus one zero oops okay so that is basically all the directions that we can go now let's define uh, our function here to get the um, check whether it's a sub island so def uh, ha oops yeah des has sub island so I'm gonna do self what are we taking in here? So we're taking in our X position, our Y position, uh, grid one, grid two, and the visited um, data structure. So what do we want to do here? So let us again, um, we're going to want to basically check whether this is a sub island and we're going to assume it is. So we're going to say is sub island uh, equals to true. And if we find a condition where this isn't true, 
And remember that it's not true if in grid two it's land, but in grid one it's actually um, water. That's when it's not a sub island. So let us now actually uh, go through and basically do our BFS from our current position to find all of the uh, places in grid two that are a land in this particular island. So we're going to say that the queue here is just going to equal to a simple deck, uh, double end queue. We're going to say queue the append, we're going to add our current x and y position, and we're going to mark that we visited uh, this tile. So visited x, y, and we're going to say equals to true. Okay, now what we want to do is just go through and basically BFS to all of the possible positions that we can reach from our um, current land, and basically find all of the tiles on this sub island um, that are part of the island. So we're going to say while q, we're going to say that um, the current x position, the current y position is going to equal to the q dot pop left. And now what we want to do is we want to say, okay, we want to check is the current position uh, a land in our grid one, if it's not, then that means that we actually there's no match here. And we this is not a sub island. So we're going to say, if grid um, grid one of current x current y uh, equals to zero, then we say that um, is sub island oops is is sub island equals to false, right? And we can actually just basically um, return uh, from here. Actually, we might want to update our position. Let's see, I think we can just return early. Actually, let me let's see. Uh, when I did this, I did it a little bit differently, but it's fine. We'll just set it to is sub island equals false. And then let's now go to the the next one. Actually, yeah, I think we can just return false here. So return false. Um, yeah, we don't actually need this. Okay, yeah, let's just return false. And then we're going to say for so the, in the other case where we actually need to continue exploring, we're going to say for direction in uh, directions. And actually, I think I might need to say this is self dot yeah, self dot directions um, to access that variable. So for each of the directions, basically, we're going to say that the next x position is going to equal to the current x plus directions of zero, obviously, that represents the x part of it. Uh, and then next y is going to equal to the current y plus directions of one. Okay, now we have our new uh, position that we want to travel to. Obviously, we need to make sure that position is still within the grid. We want to make sure that we haven't visited this position before. And we want to actually make sure that this position is land. If it's water, we don't care. We don't, we don't want to go to it because we're only interested in counting the land. So let's now go through those cases. So we want to make sure that um, our oops, our ah, why do I keep doing that? So we want to make sure that our next x is actually greater than or equal to zero and less than the number of total rows. So actually, let's um, let's just say len grid of one, um, and we want to make sure that it's uh, and we want to check that the columns are also true. So next y less than the len grid of oops. Langrid one, sorry guys, Langrid one of zero. Okay. Uh, and okay, so we checked that the, the boundaries are fine. We need to make sure that we're actually not, we haven't visited this place before. So, and not visited, um, let's see, next x, next x, comma, next y. And we need to make sure that actually the position that we're moving to is a, um, is a land uh, position, right? So we want to say that uh, grid two of the next x and the next y actually equals to one. So if all four of those conditions are met, if we're within the bounds of our grid, if we haven't already been to this position, and if uh, the next position we're moving to is actually land, then we can go forward. And in this case, we can say that we can append this next direction. So we're going to append it to our queue. So we're going to say next x, next y. Uh, and then we can mark this tile as visited, right? So we're going to say visited of next x, next comma y equals to true. 
Okay, so if we're able to basically uh, go through the queue here, that means that um, we haven't at some point returned false. So we are safe to simply um, return true here, I believe. Let's see. Uh, is sub island. I think, actually, hold on. We don't want to return false here. I just want to say is sub island equals false. And then at the end, when we break out of the queue, then we return uh, is sub island. Okay, so that should be the implementation of the sub island. Let's run this. I am guaranteeing I probably directions. Did you mean direct? Mm, okay, let's try this. Cell. Oh, God. Uh, how do I do it with what was it? Init, right? God. How do I do it? Oh, flip. Okay, I will just cheat and be inefficient because I haven't written Python in ages. Where is it? Direction. Okay, there we go. There we go. All right, we can run that. That should be great. Uh, oh God, okay. Fuck my life, sorry guys. Uh, for direction, oh fuck, okay. I uh, sorry doing it live wrong answer great okay let me fix this because I yeah I'll be okay. okay I reviewed my old code and I actually made the mistake here this should be um, grid two of row column so basically when we do the search through grid one uh, we don't even care about a grid um, cell if actually in grid two it's not uh, water uh, sorry it's not land because then there's no point of even searching uh, that's not an island there's no point of us actually starting the the search for a sub island on a grid tile that's not actually uh, land so that's why it was uh, not working because I was using grid one here so now if we uh, submit this this should be accepted let's see it takes a while okay cool uh, acceptance sorry about that sometimes uh, we do these live Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, um, the time complexity here is going to be um, big O of n times m, where obviously uh, where n and m are the rows calls of the grid respectively. respectively. Okay, um, in this thing we only actually end up visiting each tile once, um, once and only once, so because of that, basically, it's just the dimensions of whatever the grid is. Uh, so that is kind of the time complexity for the space complexity. Obviously, we need to have our queue and we need to have our visited. The visited um, data structure is basically a 2D matrix, which has the exact dimensions of the grid. So again, that's going to be um, big O of uh, N times N. Oops, N times M. So that is your time and space complexity. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and were able to bear with me through my uh, little hiccup there. But again, we got solved it in the end. No one's perfect. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and a comment? Subscribe will really help uh, grow the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.